Hello everyone, my name is Tong Ali. In this video, I'm going to present a novel framework for building a topic taxonomy from a text corpus. The title of this work is Topic Taxonomy Completion with Hierarchical Discovery of Novel Topic Clusters. First of all, I will explain the definition of a topic taxonomy and clarify its difference from a concept taxonomy. In brief, topic taxonomy encodes the knowledge about hierarchical topic structures of a text corpus. Basically, it has a tree structure, which consists of a node and edges. And here, each node represents a single topic. So this node is usually called as topic node, and it is defined as a term cluster representing a conceptual topic. Of course, the edges imply the hierarchical symmetry relationship between two topics, which means a topic and a subtopic. For example, this figure shows the difference between a topic taxonomy and a concept taxonomy. As you can see, both of them show the knowledge for the text corpus about computer science, maybe from DBLP or archive, but each node of this left one is a term cluster, whereas the right one has a single term or single concept as its node. So we can say that the topic taxonomy additionally captures the topic group proximity and the semantic correlations among the terms. For this reason, their purposes and target applications are different to some extent. For automated construction of a topic taxonomy from text, there have been several promising studies, and I'm gonna introduce some of them first. Taxogen is the first work and kind of milestone study to construct a topic taxonomy in an unsupervised manner. The key idea of Taxogen is to construct a hierarchical tree structure by recursively performing term embedding and term clustering. This is very simple and powerful framework for topic taxonomy construction. However, it is very challenging to achieve the high quality taxonomy as good as the one curated by human because it cannot incorporate any prior knowledge or user interest into the output taxonomy. The one possible solution to improve the taxonomy quality is to utilize the minimum information about topic structures, which is assumed to be given by users, as done in Josh. This task can be regarded as weekly supervised construction of a topic taxonomy because a user-provided hierarchy of topic names is used as guidance. In other words, Josh focuses on retrieving topic terms for the topics included in a given hierarchy. To this end, it jointly optimizes the embeddings of a given tree and text in a unified spherical space, and then it retrieves a set of representative, ter representative terms for its topic. I want to remark that the goal of Josh is just mining the representative terms for user-interested topics. So this output can be thought as the topic taxonomy that only covers the topics given by a user. In other words, it is not appropriate to cover all the topics that can be found in a text corpus because of incomplete user-provided topic structures. In this sense, our research question is, how can you find complete topic structure of a text corpus, even though only the partial or incomplete topic structure is available as guidance? That is, in this work, we focus on the task of topic taxonomic completion, and it aims to construct more complete topic taxonomy by using the partial topic hierarchy. Formally speaking, the inputs are a text corpus, its predefined term set, and a partial hierarchy of topic names. This term set is usually extracted from a given corpus, and the terms will be assigned to either one of the existing known topics or one of newly created novel topics. In this figure, yellow topic nodes show new topics identified from the input corpus, including art, music, dance, and hockey. And they are correctly inserted into the topic taxonomy. To be specific, there are two technical challenges for this task. The first one is novel topics should be identified by considering the hierarchical semantic relations. In this figure, in terms of the root node, 
the hockey is not novel because it obviously belongs to its known subtopic sport. Sports here. However, hockey should be detected as a novel subtopic of sport because it doesn't belong to any of the known sport subcategories such as soccer and baseball. And the second challenge is that the granularity must be kept similar among all subtopics in order to achieve the consistency of the output taxonomy. For example, the root node here has to insert art rather than music and dance because the size of semantic scope of politics and sports are much similar to that of art rather than that of music and dance. In this work, we propose a new framework for topic taxonomic completion named Taxocom. Our framework constructs a topic taxonomy in a recursive fashion by performing term embedding and term clustering for each topic node. Additionally, it identifies novel subtopic nodes which will be inserted into the given hierarchy. In short, during the embedding step, it optimizes the text embedding space so that the terms become discriminative among the known subtopics. And during the clustering step, it assigns terms into either one of the known subtopics or novel subtopics. <clears throat> this figure illustrates the overview of our framework. I will mainly explain our method by using this figure and skim the technical details later. First, uh, let's assume that our framework currently works on this topic node, C. The first step is locally discriminative embedding. The current topic hierarchy gives us some useful information that there are three subtopics at, at this node, C1, C2, and C3, which are colored in orange, blue, and green, respectively. Therefore, we can optimize the term embedding vectors so that they become discriminative among these three subtopics by using their names as the keywords. And it is obvious that all the topic names in the subtree of each child node surely belong to the same subtopic. So they are also used as the keyword for optimization. So for example, here, the topic names of these uh, three orange nodes get closer to this first subtopic embedding vector. And in the same way, the topic names of these three blue nodes get closer to the second subtopic embedding vector. At the same time, all the subtopic embedding vectors push away from each other for enforcing the discrimination among the subtopics. Now we have discriminative space, and the second step, named now the adaptive clustering, will find out multiple clusters from this embedding space. Basically, we first discriminate the terms between known topics and novel topics colored in black and red. Then it performs clustering on each of them. By doing so, we successfully identify three known subtopic clusters of orange, blue, and green, and also new subtopic clusters whose colors are gray and yellow. Finally, they are inserted into the child nodes of the current topic node, like this. All the steps are performed recursively for each child node, and accordingly, Taxocom iterates this step again for the terms assigned to this orange topic node here. In this video, I will skip most parts of the technical details. So please refer to our full paper if you are interested in. As I mentioned, the first step is the embedding step, which is for making uh, discriminative embedding space. To this end, Taxocom adopts two techniques, local embedding and keyword-guided discriminative embeddings. This is the objective for optimizing our term embedding space. And these two parts in red boxes play a role of enhancing the discriminative power in its own way. Next, the second step is for clustering. The fir first procedure of our clustering step is to separate the terms into known topic terms and novel topic terms. We define the novelty score of each term. And this score indicates how confidently the term belongs to one of the known subtopics. Finally, all the terms eventually fall into either of them based on the novelty threshold tau. The next step is to perform spherical clustering for both known topic terms and novel topic terms. One challenge is 
to set the proper number of novel clusters here because we don't know the number of novel subtopics in practice. This will be discussed in the next slide. And the third step aims to exclude general meaning terms that are less informative to represent each subtopic. To this end, we define the significance score of each term like this, and then filter out the terms having a lower having a score lower than the threshold. Finally, the last step is for keeping the granularity of subtopic clusters consistent by selecting the optimal number of novel clusters. Uh, the key idea is we choose the number of novel clusters so that it minimizes the standard deviation of radii of all subtopic clusters. That is to say, it is capable of automatically finding the total number of subtopics by harmonizing the semantic specificity of all subtopics. For experiment, we use two real-world data sets collected from New York Times and Archive, uh, and their full two-level topic structures is available. To evaluate the capability of novel topic discovery, we consider that only a partial topic hierarchy is given. And here, such partial hierarchy can be synthesized by randomly deleting a certain portion of topics from the original ground truth hierarchy. We consider two categories of baseline method for topic taxonomy construction. So these are results. For quantitative evaluation on the topic taxonomy, we first conduct human evaluation. Here, term coherence indicates how strongly the terms in a topic node are symmetrically coherent to each other. And topic completeness quantifies how completely missing topics are recovered, which were artificially deleted from the original hierarchy. In this table, these two unsupervised methods get the lowest score for both the measures. In contrast, three weekly supervised methods achieve high scores because they can incorporate the partial information of topic structures as supervision. For all types of the given partial hierarchy, Taxocom ranks at the first, and this indicates the highest quality of its output taxonomy. We also indirectly evaluate its output taxonomy by using a downstream test, which is weekly supervised text classification. We compare the performance of the classifier, which is trained by using the topic taxonomy obtained by each method. The final classification performance is mainly affected by these two aspects. Of course, the results show that Taxocom outperforms all the other baselines. Also, to validate the effectiveness of two embedding techniques, which are local embedding LE and discriminative embedding DE, uh, we provide uh, ovulation analysis on a novelty detection task. As a result, both LE and DE significantly improves the novelty detection performance of Taxocom, which results in higher quality of the output topic taxonomy. We also visualize our spherical embedding space for the New York Times dataset. In these left figures, the anchor terms assigned in different subtopics are marked in different colors. Novel topic clusters like science, soccer, and football are quite separable from the known topic clusters, and they are successfully identified by our framework. And these right figures illustrate the binary discrimination between known topic and novel topic terms determined based on our novelty score. Or we can observe that our novelty score is effective to detect novel topic terms in this embedding space. This plot shows the topic taxonomy obtained by Taxocom. Double line boxes represent the novel topic nodes inserted by our framework and it seems to successfully expand the topic taxonomy while preserving the high-level design of the given topic structure. Finally, we also provide some case studies for both uh, topic term mining and novel topic discovery. This is our conclusion. In this work, we studied the problem of topic taxonomy completion and present a framework that discovers novel topics in a hierarchy profession. Its embedding step and clustering step are closely linked with each other. In short, the embedding step learns the discriminative term embedding vectors 
and the clustering steps identifies multiple term clusters for known and novel subtopics. Uh, the implementation is publicly available at this GitHub repository. Thanks for watching this video. Okay, so um, I think we can start our QA session. So uh, let's see if we have questions from the chat. Uh, before questions from the audience, there is one question from me in the, so Tumha, are you assuming like for each document, you have a fixed amount of fixed numbers of topics or that should be, is it a, this assumption too strong or not? Um, I think it is not strong because we don't know the exact number of topics in this document. And uh, we just extract the topic knowledge from the text corpus. So we use the text corpus and we aim to construct a topic taxonomy from each document. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. yeah, and what, what if they, mm -hmm. for each document, like in a, in a corpus, you have mm -hmm. many documents and for, for different documents, they have varied a number of uh, topics. So is yeah, right. it also mm -hmm. applicable or? or not? Yeah, because uh, a document can be uh, relevant to some of the topics, only a subset of the topics. And uh, so, sorry, what's your question again? So the question is uh -huh. about uh -huh. uh, for different documents, you, ha you might have different, yeah, different number of topics. topics. Mm -hmm. So is your model also applicable in such case? Yeah, right. And I want to emphasize that this task of uh, topic taxonomic construction is quite different from the topic modeling, conventional topic modeling, because mm -hmm. uh, topic modeling considers that each topic uh, has a topic distribution, uh, which is relevant to all topics, but it is not about the document, but about the top uh, terms or words. Mm -hmm. So uh, okay. this topic taxonomy yeah, can be applied to any uh, topic related uh, NLP applications. So mm -hmm. I think it doesn't matter whether the each document uh, has a different number of topics. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm.